What's up everybody, it's your favorite scientist, favorite nerd. Today we are looking at Fans Toys Tesla, which is their homage to G1 Perceptor. Uh, as you can see, he holds his accessories just fine. And instead of wasting time, I'll go ahead and tell you that I've swapped the guns in each hand, and there's not a problem there. Uh, we will talk about accessories here in a minute, but before we do, while I have these weapons in his hands, I just want to point out one issue that I do have. Now, the top one is fine. So if you if you angle the top one, you won't have an issue one, but the issue with it, but the bottom one is a little loose. So now with that being said, let's talk about the accessories. So he comes with this one, and this little piece comes out. This is a single cast, uh, red plastic, it's fine. And this is a uh, single cast as well. Lots of little line work and stuff in there. It does have this red paint around, which is, is not perfect, um, but it's pretty good. Uh, individual results will vary, obviously, on that. But <clears throat> this, there are two different color reds, and I have a feeling that that is not entirely intentional. Um, I have a feeling that it's probably going over the gray and coming out a little different. However, the two tones here, it doesn't bother me. I'm just pointing it out. This one, single cast. Silver paint for the chamber, um, and then uh, blue here on the scope, silver there. Um, decent sculpt and everything. Very, uh, very G1, you know. Good to go. For Perceptor himself, uh, he comes with this, which is basically an accessory, even though it's part of the figure, which is smart the way it's done. But this, uh, this extends like that, uh, using this top piece here which is cool and uh, you can look through it let's see if I can and it's flipped that's I think that's scientifically accurate but um, it works is what I'm trying to get at there so that's pretty cool this also uh, it comes off for transformation I'll show you that momentarily but basically you can swing it to the other side and plug it into here if you want it on this side instead which is nice they didn't have to do that and they did it so so that's cool let's talk about the uh, the figure himself and the head we'll get this out of the way just for the sake the head is on a hinged swivel which yeah if you know me you know that that is ideal in my opinion uh, for this type of toy I, I don't prefer a ball joint over this I prefer this as the method for the articulation and it's done very nicely, very smooth. Paints a good silver on the face. I'm actually, it's like a silver finish, but it still looks good. And then the uh, the metallic eyes is also really well done. Typical fans toys fashion, but really well done. Yellow paint in there, pretty clean. Uh, yellow is a hard paint to kind of nail, and they definitely did it. So cheers to them for that. Uh, I can't decide. If the lips are a little too much, I mean, it's not hateful either way, but it just, I can't decide if it just made me a little too, uh, you know, I don't know, lippy. But uh, the articulation is hindered, oh, actually, no, it's not. It's hindered a bit to look down that way, which you would never really want to do anyway, right? So, uh, pretty well thought out, I must say. Let's move down the figure. Let's get to the arms. They are on um, a really, really, really well articulated piece of engineering here. So you have the hinge up, getting you to there. Then you have a swivel at the base of the hinge. And then you have, due to transformation, you have a butterfly joint uh, that doesn't look that bad even for a cheap. However, I must say that this one doesn't plug in as good as that one. Um, it's fine, like it's not going anywhere, you know, if you, if you apply a little bit of force, it's going to come out, but, you know, on a shelf and everything, no, no issues, it's just, it seems bizarre to me. So anyway, the, um, we got paint here on the shoulder, we got this gunmetal paint up on top, which is really nicely done, 
and sharp and clean all in there. Bicep swivel, double hinged elbow. We've already talked about uh, one of the possible issues with that. Uh, hands, thumb is on a ball peg at the base of the knuckle. All of these fingers are individually articulated, which you know is not my favorite thing, but it's all on a single hinge here at the base knuckle for the bottom three, and then the trigger finger has an additional hinge halfway through it at the second knuckle, rather. So, um, not the worst. Um, I mean, it's it's well done. If they're going to articulate every finger, I'd rather them do it this way. But I'm not a huge fan of every finger needing individual articulation. But that's just a design choice that they made, and at least they made a good choice in the way they did it. For the uh, forearms, we don't have any pain or anything, but we do have, you see that came out again. We do have uh, this little silver piece here. And mine is, like, smudgy. Like, I, I don't know if everyone's is like that, but mine's... They got like a texture almost in it, but uh, it doesn't look very clean. But I'm nitpicking, uh, admittedly. Uh, moving down the figure, we got uh, this chest piece here. It flips open to display this. We got uh, this gunmetal in there and then the silver paint, and it's all done very, very nicely. There is tons of stuff that's not painted in here. I'm, maybe it would have been too busy if they did it, but I would have liked to have seen them. Um, I don't know. This chrome finish on there, translucent plastic there, looks good. This little tray flips down. We'll talk about that more in transformation, but whatever. Uh, the back, we got silver little accents there. Tons of screw holes, but, you know, I guess I got to put them somewhere. But it, it does, like, it is, like, whew, an awful lot. But, you know, at least the, the front where you would have them, the part that counts is good to go. The uh, skirts on the hips, we have uh, these pieces. They all hinge up. And we'll talk about these pieces a little bit later. But um, to give you the articulation in the uh, hips, but before we do that, we have a waist swivel on a soft ratchet with no issue there. It feels like a soft ratchet anyway. It might be a tolerance issue because that is something that's going on with this guy. Uh, hips are on universals. It's like it feels like a it's like a soft ratchet this way, but the joint is so tight that I can't tell if it's the tightness of the joint or the ratchet itself. And uh, a hard ratchet front and back that gets you a really good range of motion and one blue painted accent right in there which is something they didn't have to do and they did it and I appreciate it uh, we also get a swivel at the knee that's ratcheted for transformation but it's there and then the hinge on the knee which is ratcheted getting you 90 degrees there so cool in the gang as far as the shins we got some some paint in there like a dark metal in the background and then the silver on top as well as a little silver accent there. I love little stuff like that. I'm a big fan of it. And then this little blue diamond, or uh, triangle rather, same type of thing. And then this off reddish gray color there as well. Well done. Feet are die cast. They are, uh, they tilt a bit. The toes tilt a lot. The heel tilts. And then you have an ankle rocker built in with this hinge there. And that's on, that gives you the ankle tilt as well so that's all good and then we got this little silver accent on the black uh, painted metal which is uh, really nice it makes for a really clean figure overall it's very G1 um, this is actually this is my third time shooting this review um, because I just I, got, I looked at the other ones I just couldn't get my tone right because like it's a really good figure but I don't come across excited about it and I think that's because well, you know what, we'll save it for the final thoughts. But yeah, so pretty good all around. Let's get him transformed. We'll uh, open up this flap here. If I can get in there, girl. There it is. And then uh, you got to be careful with these thumbs. Close that up nicely. Same on the other side. Watch this thumb. Just angle the fist as you need it in order to get the thumb in there. And then close her up. Uh, get this uh, microscope bit out of the way. It's tabbed in right there. It is a thin plastic, but it doesn't feel like it feels sturdy. I got a slight stress mark on mine right in there. So be mindful, but it feels fine. Um, I just I'm just noticing that. So uh, let's see here. What do we got to do? Open up these uh, shoulder bits here. And on the other side. And this one you'll notice will have no problem opening up. Fold this down. Fold this 
piece here forward and then the head down and that'll come back in. Now this bit here um, gets a little a little bizarre but you fold this 180 degrees bring this up uh, and then you fold these in and it's just an odd uh, it's an odd feeling, like it doesn't feel smooth, um, doesn't feel polished, but it, you know, it, it works, it just doesn't feel polished. I don't know how else to describe it. And then, let me raise the camera up a little bit. This plugs in to these holes, and it's not, once again, it just doesn't feel clean. Um, once you get it there, it feels perfect, but the act of actually getting it there doesn't feel 100% right. Um, but what are you going to do? So. Fold this out, extend all this bit of business here. And then uh, this little notch here slides up. Make sure that this is extended out. And then these bits plug in to the forearm. And you can get this angle. The, the better you have this, this bit here angled out, the, the more efficient the microscope will be. But for the sake of this video, that should do fine. Okay, let's get the feet. Simple. Close these up. And well, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Fold these little plastic bits down here. This is a really tight tolerance um, on a very small hinge so once again doesn't feel like it's gonna break I don't have a single stress mark there just making you aware just to exercise caution because it doesn't the, the movement of it, of it doesn't give you the the warm and fuzzies pull the skip the hip skirts up and then rotate that up and around so that you expose that port for this peg and then this is kind of a, a bit of an alignment game but there it is that one went really smoothly that time I've had some less than smoothly experience less than smooth experiences all right let's see if I can't do it twice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there all in all not bad uh, rotate the calves so that they're facing up and then bend them around, and that will type a tab into there. And this is uh, the microscope mode. Now I'm going to show you, you can have it like this, which is fine. Or you can open this flap here, fold these tracks out, fold that back in. This is another tolerance thing here that doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies. Actually, I think I might have. Let me look over here. I'm not sure if I've noticed that before. Yeah, there has an, an additional wheel. So that's cool. I hadn't noticed that. Um, I really should probably start looking at instructions at some point in my reviewing career. But then I wouldn't be a man. Fold out these wheels. Now you can do all this without these wheels and tracks and all, but the option is there for you. And fold that back. That's a tolerance issue. Close it in, and you're good to go. Come around here to the back, bring down that wheel, and now you've got a microscope on wheels. And 
that's cool because I initially thought it didn't roll, it was just for looks. Um, but now with those wheels out that I just didn't see the first go round, he rolls like a champ, <laughs> which is goofy, but you know, it definitely works, uh, which is very cool. So then you can flow, fold down these, uh, these scientific things, doing scientific things, and then he can, you know, examine um, and tell you that the wounds are fatal. Uh, all in all, pretty cool. There he is with his uh, G1 counterpart, and you know, pretty nice update. Uh, there's no place to store the weapons, at least that I've found, but uh, I haven't looked that much into it because I would never have them in this mode anyway. But you know what? Well done. For size comparisons, there he is with his G1 counterpart. Pretty impressive. And there he is with some other Season 2 and Season 3 Masterpiece Autobots. I love his size. Like, look at him next to Ultra Magnus, look at him next to Blaster. Like, that feels on the money to me. But let me ask you this. Just a matter of opinion. Is Red Alert too small? Are these Autobot cars too small? I have to ask. Because to me, I feel like Red Alert should be a little taller. I feel like Red Alert should be the same size as Perceptor. And I don't feel like Perceptor is the one that's wrong. I feel like Red Alert is too small next to Ultra Magnus. Interested to hear what you have to say about it. Okay, he comes with one more accessory that I hadn't mentioned yet. And that's because I wanted to apply it. Um, and that's the different forearms and thighs. So now I've swapped mine out. And I gotta say, I much prefer this one. Um... It is a bit of a chore, uh, the legs more so than the forearms, uh, but after I tighten the screw in the forearms, look what doesn't pose a problem anymore. You know, so that's one thing fixed, so disregard that complaint from the beginning. Um, I much prefer this though, I much prefer this color. I, for some reason, this just clicks for me more so than the other, so uh, that makes me a lot more happy. Uh, I advise using a screwdriver that it's got some real torque to it. I tried to use this one. It didn't work. I had to get one with a proper grip. Let's talk about the cons of the figure though. So there are some tolerance things like the way that the shoulders transform inside. Um, these panels here that allow the tracks to come out. Uh, these panels here. There's just like they're having a really difficult time hitting that sweet spot. Now I do feel like they have it in the bicep swivel. I do feel like they have it in the uh, the knee ratchets and in the head and in the waist like I don't know I believe in this company I think they could do great things but I feel like they're having some some issues finding that 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 good middle line but it's hard for me to really say a lot of negative things about this toy because it's really it's pretty fantastic I think that my biggest issue with the toy is that no matter how fancy it is no matter how good the sculpt is no matter how good the accessories are whatever it's always going to be Perceptor and he's just, there's just not a lot to him. He's just a little bit on the boring side. Um, he's just never been a favorite character of mine. You know, it's just he's not really hitting any buttons for me aside from, like, yep, this is Perceptor. You know, your connections to the character definitely weighs in in how you receive the toy. Because it's really well made overall, but it's just not that exciting to me because it's just Perceptor. I think maybe the other thing is is that like the teaser images of this came out and then this came out so quickly afterwards maybe i didn't have enough time to get fully excited you know people often complain about you know the length that third party companies take to get a product out but this one came out so quickly i feel like i didn't have the time to really build up my anticipation for the figure but the figure ends up delivering which is good because sometimes it's even worse if you get so much anticipation of something being great and then you get there or you receive it or it happens and then it doesn't feel as great how much further is it just over there it's a lot of stuff it's ridiculous of the steps yep good i hope there's a oh, um a fitness workout that I have to do once I get to the top. That'd be awesome. It's a good idea. Huh? I said, look how beautiful. You see that grass down there? You know what's in there? Love it. Bugs. Not water. Bugs. Oh. Bugs are in there. Let's, come on, let's go be a buffet. So what now? I don't know. Get in the water. Get in the water. What am I going to do with my shoes, Laura? So here's the positives. The materials are fantastic. The sculpt is fantastic. The paint is well applied and clean as a whistle. The articulation is there. I love this company. I feel like this company is on its way to being the best thing going for the Transformers fandom. It 
does a job perfectly of filling a gap in your collection that may never be filled by an official product and the quality is arguably at least on par with the official product. I strongly recommend this guy. Be mindful of the things that I mention, but he is fantastic. Here's the thing, all cards being on the table. If Takara Masterpiece released a Perceptor, I would have a hard time believing or finding or even fathoming the idea that it could be superior to this. It's a really well-made toy. There are some issues, but we're talking about a company with three years of experience, and that's pretty mind-blowing. So I strongly recommend him. He's always going to be Perceptor. There's no changing that. For better or for worse, if you love Perceptor, this is your guy. If Perceptor bores you, this is as good as it's going to get, so you might as well get him. I can't think of a reason to say not to get him. It's just that one of his biggest downfalls is that he is him. But they did a good job making he him, and him he, and so on and so forth. That being said, uh, I'll be back very soon with Sever. So thanks for listening, and thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. <laughs>